Hey Saints, um, I felt the message fall in my spirit. Nothing, nothing like this before. I mean, I get a lot of dreams and visions from Jesus Christ that I haven't even uploaded yet. And, um, but I never got a message like this. And I get a lot of messages to relate to you all, but I never got one like this. This is for the Israelites. Um, the Lord told me that, uh, Christians are persecuted by even the Jewish people. You see, because, uh, if you remember the word, you know, it says in the Bible how, uh, the Pharisees, they had a large following very large following and when Jesus Christ came on a scene and started speaking boldly about the gospel speaking truth you know um, he started gaining a large following and putting people on the right path which we know that Jesus Christ is the truth the narrow the truth he's a narrow gate and he's the true way he's the light thereby diminishing the followers of the Pharisees so the Pharisees got threatened see the whole agenda against Jesus Christ was pure jealousy they got threatened, excuse me, and, excuse me, when a demon has a large following, right, and a true servant of God comes along, we know Jesus Christ is God, okay, but we know that it says in First John that the Word was God, God, be the Word was God, and the Word became flesh, God dwelt among men for a time to serve them, right, so when a true servant of God comes in the picture, and starts preaching the word of God, starts preaching boldly, performing these beautiful miracles, you're going to get a large follower because they, they're going to see that that person is, that individual is truly of God, and they're going to start to believe and have bold faith. And then the demon, the false prophet, the Pharisee is going to lose their following, right? It's going to shrink. So the Pharisees didn't want that. They're demons, you know? They don't want that. So they try to discredit Jesus Christ. I'm going to make something clear. Jesus Christ is God. Period. He was God manifested in the flesh. He is God. He's the God of Abraham. Okay? So, Jesus Christ was performing miracles. He also said he's the Son of God, that he's the Messiah, and uh, which he is, and that he is God, that he is one with the Father, and that he has the authority to uh, forgive sins. And then the Pharisees told him, you're speaking blasphemy because you're claiming to be God. Right? And, uh, here Jesus Christ is performing all these miracles right before their eyes and speaking boldly and prophesying and healing and casting demons out and these people these Pharisees that were blind are blind are not believing in Jesus Christ even though he was performing all these miracles they're not believing that Jesus Christ is God because no you gotta think about it no human being can perform these miracles okay before Jesus Christ came on the scene, no human being could perform these miracles. Okay? They didn't have the power to cast demons out. They didn't have the power to do any of that. They had that kind of power until after Jesus Christ was resurrected. Okay? Jesus Christ was resurrected. Then the Holy Spirit came and baptized um, the Holy Spirit came upon the 12 disciples of Jesus Christ and then they started to go out perform miracles preach the gospel heal the sick and so forth that's when the Holy Spirit came I always believe that the Holy Spirit was present but I'm saying that the Holy Spirit manif manifested and gave gave power to the disciples to do these miracles and make disciples of nations after Jesus Christ was resurrected okay do I believe that the prophets of old used God's name um, did I do I believe that they battled demons Yes, of course, the prophets of old in the Old Testament's battle demons, the righteous prophets, did they use God's name? Yes, of course they did. You know, in the name of God of Abraham, you know, I remember I remember there was one situation where Job was being tormented by demons, and he used the name of God of Abraham. He used, you know, God, in the name of God of Abraham, we know that God has many names, Emmanuel, Elohim. So God, uh, Job used God's name, okay? He called upon God's name to save him from these demons that were tormenting him if you read the book of Job. So I believe that the prophets of old, the righteous prophets, always had the Holy Spirit present with them. Always. Always. Okay? Always had the Holy Spirit present with them. And I believe that God was teaching them little by little how to use his mighty name. But I believe that the Holy Spirit didn't really 
the Holy, I believe that the, the powers of the Holy Spirit was not really manif was met was um okay, I believe it was always manifested, right? But I believe that the powers of the Holy Spirit was manifested even in a greater way, in a greater in, in a was manifested, how do I explain this? Was manifested more intensely in a wider and larger magnitude, more greatly in the New Testament, because God knew that this was the end of, you know, we are, you know, we are in the end times, that the last, last generation was going to be coming upon us quickly. So God, um, Jesus Christ, when he was resurrected, he sent the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, to the 12 disciples. And then he started to perform miracles. The prophets of old, the righteous ones, never performed miracles in their own way that they did. You know what I mean? By preaching the gospel, warning the masses. That was a miracle. But I'm saying like healing the sick, delivering demons out of human bodies, um, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. That happened in the New Testament. I believe, like I said, the righteous prophets of old told people about God, that He's real, that He exists, and they probably told them about the revelations God gave them. They probably told them about a, uh, they also told them about a child that was going to be born, which is Jesus Christ, that will save mankind from their sins. I believe that the righteous prophets of old did say that, you know what I mean? But in the New Testament, when Jesus Christ was born, and He died for the sins of mankind, and it was a chance for man to come to the Most High God, a way out to repent for their sins, that they had, if they call upon the name of Jesus Christ, they could have everlasting life. That is the gospel, okay, that the prophets of the New Testament spread. The prophets of all, the righteous ones. So like I said, when God, when Jesus Christ was resurrected, he sent the comfort of the Holy Spirit to the um, 12 disciples. And they were able to heal, deliver, dem deliver demons out of humans, human beings, um, preach the gospel. Um, he was sick, help the lost, okay, make disciples of nations. So in the Old Testament, like I said, those prophets were sent out there. I believe they talked about God, about the prophecy of Jesus Christ being born. But they were sent out to warn the masses. They were guides. They were sent out guides for kings. They were sent out to warn the masses, to warn one of their errors, warn one of their sins, to let them know that God does exist, Okay. But the gospel of Jesus Christ that says to call upon the name of Jesus Christ and you will be saved. The gospel of Jesus Christ about baptizing, getting, becoming born again, or confessing of your sins, repenting of them, going through the corruption so they could be, you could be washed away by the blood of the Lamb. That's part of the gospel. If you do that, you will, you know, you will reap the rewards in heaven. If you acknowledge Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you will be saved. That's the new, that's the New Testament. That's the gospel. The gospel, that good news, the prophets in the New Testament spread that. I hope I'm explaining this right. The prophets, the righteous prophets of all the New Testament spread that. Spread that gospel after Jesus Christ was resurrected. They even preached the gospel while Jesus Christ was alive. Okay? And then when Jesus Christ was resurrected, they not only preached the gospel, they spread miracles. They, they performed miracles that I just told you about. Okay? Now... These types of miracles Jesus Christ performed while he was alive, okay? And um, he performed while he was alive. Nobody else did it. Only Jesus Christ did that miracle, which proves he's God, and the Holy Spirit is one with Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ is one with the Father, one God. So when Jesus Christ was resurrected, he gave power to the disciples to perform these miracles. Only God can do that. So when Jesus Christ was resurrected, the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, he sent down to the disciples, okay? That gave them the power to perform all these miracles. Now, I told you something here. We, we each have a Holy Spirit in us, amen? But the, the main Holy Spirit, the main Holy Spirit is Jesus Christ, who is the Father, who is God, one God. Just as the Bible says, the Bible says, and I believe in 1 John, it says, um, that there are uh, many antichrists, there's many antichrist spirit, but there's one main antichrist spirit that will be coming on the scene, which is the devil. So you have to think about this for a minute. The en enemy counterfeits everything the Most High God does. So if there's many antichrist spirits, and there's one main antichrist spirit according to the book of John, then that means that there's got to be 
many Holy Spirits, but there's one main Holy Spirit who is God. So we each have a Holy Spirit dwelling in us, amen? With, where, that resides in our spirit. But there's one main Holy Spirit, and that is God. And that is Jesus Christ. And that's what Jesus Christ sent his disciples to teach. Just what Jesus Christ was preaching while he was here on earth. He was preaching the gospel, performing miracles. The Pharisees didn't want to believe that. Even though they saw it with their own two eyes, only God can do that. So they started to try to discredit Jesus, calling him a false prophet, accusing him of witchcraft, of his works being of Beelzebub, which I rebuke that spirit in Jesus' mighty name. And they were all lies. It, what it boiled down to is they were jealous of Jesus. They didn't want to um, uh, lose their large following. These false prophet demons were self-righteous, and they that's why they're burning in hell, the Pharisees. And also... They was offended because Jesus Christ did tell them that he is God. The only one that has the authority to forgive sins is God. Jesus Christ is God. I mean, the miracles were, were proof enough. You know what I mean? And, and the way he spoke boldly and he was so peaceful. He never sinned. Jesus Christ never sinned. He never told a lie. The Pharisees sinned and told a lie. Okay? So, I'm not trying to deviate from the path. I'm trying to tell you Jewish people, you, you Israelites, okay? If you are persecuting Christians that have the truth that Jesus Christ is God. You are persecuting God's sheep and there's, God's not going to let that go unpunished. You already turn your, your hearts from God. You already turn your, your spirits from God. You support homosexuality, abortion, idolatry. You know, God doesn't believe in it. I'm not saying all Jewish people do. I'm only talking about the majority of you all do. The majority of you all believe Jesus Christ is burning in hell and he's not. He is God. That's blasphemy. You also believe that Jesus Christ is not the Messiah. He is the Messiah. So the majority of the Jewish people have an antichrist spirit. Not the antichrist spirit. They have an antichrist spirit in them. Because they don't believe Jesus Christ is the true, the light, and the way. Only, only a, a small percentage of Jewish people do. They're known as Nazarene Jewish or Masonic Jewish people. But the majority of you all, Jesus Christ is sending a plague upon your lands. When I say a plague, I mean a plague of war, disease, pestilence. Your country is going to be split. Your country is going to be um, occupied by foreign enemies. Your sons and your daughters, your husbands and your wives will be ravaged. They will be that of another. Your lands... They will not bring forth sweet fruit, sweet grapes, sweet nectarines, sweetness. They will not bring forth water of life. They will not bring forth the um, springs of fresh water. Your lands will be dry. They won't even produce any crops. If they produce fruit, the fruits will be evil. The water is being withheld from your land as is food. And your economy is going to fail as well. You don't have any blessings. It, God abandoned Israel for a time. You don't have any blessings. You, you, you know, you, you cry out to God, but you reject them at the same time. So God's not hearing your cries. I'm here to tell you all that, that because you reject Jesus Christ as God, and you reject his laws, you reject his statutes, both Old and New Testaments, and the servants he sent to warn you, God is sending a wicked, rat, a wicked rod against you all. Your enemies, and you know who they are, are going to end up occupying your land. Now we know that the scriptures prophesy that Israel will be delivered. We know that. But until then, you are going to be occupied by foreign enemies. Your land is going to fail. Israel will fail in every area. Every area. The only ones that will be protected are the righteous, a small number of Jewish people in Israel to this day. To you guys, to the righteous, don't worry. God will tell you what you need to do when that time comes. The violence you all face. You don't think it's ironic that, that the violence in Israel is increasing? You Jewish people don't find that strange? You don't think that's strange that all these killings are happening? That's because you turn against God and those, those are judgments coming up against you. One after the other. There's more coming. It's not just that. There's going to be a lot more. Way worse. That violence is going to increase because you rejected God. Jesus Christ is God. It's what you, you failed to get. You, you don't get it. 
The kind of miracles he performed, nobody else ever seen. The only first person that was able to perform those kind of miracles was Jesus Christ alone. And then after he left and he was resurrected and his Holy Spirit came down to the disciples, then those miracles started to be performed to be performed by the 12 disciples. And God commanded them to make disciples of nations. You try to discredit Jesus Christ, but it didn't work. He's not burning in hell. Your Pharisees are. Because you rejected Jesus Christ, Israel's going to pay big time. How could you sit there and persecute Christians when you Jewish people are being persecuted yourself by Muslims? And you surrounded by enemies. If anything, you should be looking for an ally. And the best ally you have are Christians. That's the best ally. But you choose to persecute Christians, God's people. That's not a smart move. So guess what? The Muslims will not only get to persecute you, but they will also get to have your holy sites for a time too. That's what Jesus told me. You could believe me or not believe me. You, you need to take this to Jesus in prayer because he is the God of Abraham. And you need to ask him for yourself. But you're not going to be able to have access to the Wailing Wall soon, to the Patriarch's tomb, to the Matriarch's tomb, to all the holy sites in, in, in um, Israel because they're going to be given to the Muslims for a time. For a time. Which means that for a time those holy sites will be desecrated, but then rest assured, those holy sites will be restored and those Muslims will be destroyed according to what the Lord told me. If those that haven't blasphemed God, assuming they didn't blaspheme Him, they don't repent and come to Jesus. That's their choice. But you Jewish people have a choice. Okay? You could do the research for yourself and cry out to the God of Abraham, who is Jesus Christ, and ask Him to show you, or not. Because I I'll tell you this. You don't want to fall into the living God's hands. Like you all already did. That's a fate I don't want to face. He's powerful. The God of Abraham is capable of anything. So you opposing God is, is suicidal. But see, God has mercy and he gives you a choice. You can either hearken to what I'm telling you and ask God if what I tell you is true. Or you could just simply sweep it under the rug. But when I tell you this, I'm going to defend the saints against you, Jewish people, and Muslims. Anybody. Anybody. I'm not directing this to all Jewish people. I'm only talking about the majority of you all that believe Jesus Christ is not God. But the minority that believe Jesus Christ is God, the very same God of Abraham, the great I am, the Lord will direct you on what you need to do. He's going to send somebody your way. How that's going to happen, I don't know. Just be ready. and You'll know when that time is. But the majority that oppose Jesus Christ, Forgive me for saying this, okay? But you are stupid to even oppose a God that powerful. So, the damage is done, so to speak. You made your choice. Hopefully, you can change your mind. But if you keep making the choice that you believe Jesus Christ is burning in hell for blasphemy, because He's not, He is God. And if you continue to re reject Jesus Christ, Then you know what happens next is up to you know is your is your fault. You deserve it, and I'm just gonna be I'm just gonna be point blank with you. I'm gonna be honest, okay? Lord says if you commit a sin in ignorance, meaning you didn't know it was a sin, you can be forgiven if you confess, repent of the sins, and go through the corrections. They can be washed away by the blood of a lamb. That includes the sin of blasphemy. You might think, oh, well, if you blaspheme God, you can't be forgiven, blah, blah, blah. I get it. But there are people out there that commit blasphemy, a sin of blasphemy, and they don't even know that it's a sin. They don't know what they're doing. So they still have a chance to be forgiven. But if you commit a sin, knowing it is a sin, 
a sin of blasphemy or whatever sin, and you have the knowledge, that sin cannot be washed away by the blood of the Lamb. Read Hebrews 10, 26. Okay? So, I'm, I've been told to send you this message. I'm going to stop this here right now. But this is for the Israelites, specifically for you all. You need to stop coming up against the people of God. Because what's coming to you, what is going to be, what you coming up against the people of God is going to be the least of your worries compared to what's coming to you next.